Uh, there's a philosophy behind a lot, or every single shot. Um, I, I, the only the only camera shot I can think of there isn't a philosophy behind or a reason to do it is the drone shot. I haven't figured that out yet. You know, because it's always moving. If it wasn't moving, it would just be a st establishing overhead shot. But since it's normally moving that way, have you ever noticed that? And it's usually over trees and houses and all of that. I don't know what that's supposed to represent. Like, what are you telling me? It doesn't represent anything. It's just like, hey, look what I could do with a drone. I'm going to track upwards on an, uh, you know, an overhead shot through these woods. Okay. <laughs> now, if you used it the same way that you would use, say, a crane, because you couldn't get that high, and you had a, uh, you know, a one, two, three, like a beginning, middle, and end of the shot, then it makes total sense. Handheld. Type of shots. Handheld. That is when you're shaking the camera, you know, the camera is off of the tripod, the camera is off the sticks, the camera is off the dolly, the camera is off of anything, and it is being held by the operator or the director or whoever is holding the camera, and they're shooting. Uh, anytime it's handheld, this is going to sound like a rule, but it's not a rule, but it, the shot represents philosophically uh, as far as shots go, and as far as, you know, Francois Truffaut, and as far as Hitchcock is concerned, hectic or chaotic situation, or a first-person point of view who's like moving around, you know, moving around like, I think he did it in Halloween. I mean, there's so many films that have, that have done it, but Halloween, they use his point of view, and of course, it's handheld, so it feels as though you are that uh, person uh, looking through that person's eyes. That's the only times that you really should use handheld. Static shot. Static shot doesn't move. It just sits there. It's a static shot. It's pretty simple. If someone asks you, hey, what are we doing? Are we moving? Is this shot moving? And you say, no, it's static. Like, All right. You put it on the sticks like I am right now. This is you're looking through a static shot. Just pan. Pan left, pan right. So it's when the camera pans to the right, when it pans over to the left. It's called a pan. Tilt. That's when you tilt up and tilt down. You know, looking at somebody's hands down there at their waist and you tilt up to their face. Tracking shot or track shot, doesn't matter. Some countries they call it a, uh, a trucking shot, which I always found kind of strange. I don't know why it's trucking, but I guess it's sort of, you know, like tracking shot is when we're we're tracking the in, the camera to the right like that. So it's staying static, it isn't panning, it isn't tilting, but it's actually moving. That's a tracking shot. Usually there's a person that we're walking along with or a car that we're tracking along with. You can but you can track right or left. Doesn't matter, still tracking. The push in. So we are static and we we slowly push in or we quickly push into something. The entire frame moves into something. What was once tiny becomes something pushed into it. It's not the same as a zoom. Zoom flattens out the image. It's a push-in. You could also do a, you pull back. Got the boom shot. And you can either boom down or you can boom up. So it's done on a dolly or it's done on a, a crane. Doesn't matter, you're still booming up. So you're actually the, the entire camera is lifting or the entire uh, frame is lowering. Either way, you're booming up and down. Right, here's the balloon cam. I saw it once, but it passed over my house. The dolly zoom is something that is used too much. <laughs> the dolly zoom is a shot that is used almost as much as the rack focus and everything handheld by film school students. It used to be a trick shot, but it's not really a trick shot anymore. When you push in and you zoom out, or you zoom in and you pull out, and what that does is it creates this effect where it brings, if you are pulling back on the, on the dolly and you're zooming in, what it's doing is it brings the background 
closer and smushes the frame so it feels as though something is moving. Vertigo, he uses it in vertigo, but that's the other way around. What he does is where they're pushing in and they're zooming out makes it have depth, like it makes it seem as though the stairwell is, you know, getting deeper and deeper. They also did it in, um, I believe Jaws. I think Steven Spielberg did it in Jaws. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's a shot on the beach where he goes from, he's in a medium shot with his wife behind him. That's exact, yeah, that's exactly what they do. So it's emphasizing the sim uh, situation. It's like immediately pulling him towards you. Another example of the dolly zoom is Goodfellow. It makes it seem like as though something is happening, but you're not quite sure. You're getting closer to the characters but the background, the background's focal length is changing. And that's the purpose of the dolly zoom. This is a Dutch shot. This is the frame. Since I can't do this with the, the actual frame that I got here. And pretend that that is the lens. But Dutch is basically when you turn the camera. If we, this was the, <laughs> the angle or at that degree right there. Doesn't matter. It could be even more so like that until it gets vertical. Then it's something. It's a vertical shot, and it comes from experimental films of the 1910s, 20s, stuff like that. Uh, Dutch cinema. Okay, this might look really strange to you, but this is raking down. It's, a, it's raking down, raking up. I don't know where it came from. I have no idea where it came from. It's just something that you picked up. But it's when you're at an angle uh, with the lens. That, say you're. Oh, there's a beautiful shot in uh, Casino. They had to rake up because Joe Pesci is talking to De Niro. Lens hood, you're looking downward at that angle. Or if this is the lens hood, you're raking up at that angle, which is what we're doing right here. Rake. See if I get copyright takedown or whatever. Okay, the whip pan is a pan, but it um, it's actually almost, it's half trick shot, half just regular style pan. If you imagine, I'm trying to think of a film right now that does it. A lot of action films do it. Some comedies do it as well. Um, I think Army of Darkness did it. I'm pretty sure Army of Darkness did it. That's what I can think of right now in my head when he like he shoots him to the tree and it whip pans. But usually it extends them. They do it in Casino as well. It's, it's done in Casino because I remember when Joe Pesci and his a couple of his crew are sitting at a little table. Then De Niro's character comes in. And what happens between that is a whip pan. And it, it seems like it circles. So it basically pans left and it wishes by everything. So everything becomes like almost a blur. It seems like it spins in a circle. But what it actually does is it elongates the pan. It makes it seem like he is a lot farther than he actually is from them. That's a whip pan. Well, I think I've captured. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit. Really, it is up to you how you want to name your shots. But like I said before at the beginning, uh, as long as you and whoever you're working with have the same vocabulary or are on the same page and understand each other, it's perfectly fine. And uh, I hope that was helpful. That's it.